Hi, and in this video in the QPSMR Real Productivity Gain series, we're going to look at the basics of MRDCL and why you might upgrade to MRDCL. So in this video, we're not only going to show you what the basics of the script that MRDCL uses that's generated from QPSMR, but also some of the reasons why you might use it either instead of QPSMR or quite often in conjunction with QPSMR so that you can do some of the simpler work in QPSMR and do your complex requirements in MRDCL or more complex projects in MRDCL. So we're going to start with a project uh, that's been used in other videos here and I'm just going to open this up and I'm going to just have a little look at some of the variables here or some of the questions here so that we can see what happens to them when we uh, convert them to MRDCL script. Now, I should say there's a whole series of videos on the qpsmrlearning.com website uh, that will teach you all the basics and as well as many of the advanced uh, things that are in, available in MRDCL. There's about 50 videos in that series that you can use to really get to grips with how you can do the simple through to the complex complex and advanced and sophisticated ways that MRDCL offers over and above QPSMR. So let's just have a look at some of the questions we've got in this uh, particular project. We've got a question called gender and that's got two responses and you can see it's in data location 7 over here. We've got region uh, which has got three responses. So if I were to drill down to that you can see there's the three responses north, central and south. And as we go through the questionnaire, you can see I've got uh, question three and five, which are both single. Question six, you'll note, is an integer. Uh, so that's picking up the number of employees. V VQ6 combines Q6 into some ranges. So if we look at that, there we go. It picks up one to 200, 201 to 500, and greater than 500 employees. And so on here through some other questions, you'll see there's a rating scale here. We just widen this you can see that q12a to qt Q, q12g are rating scales for different factors and if we look at the responses there you'll see the six responses uh, very important through to uh, not not given uh, not very unimportant so there's a range of questions in here now what i'm going to do to have a look at so we can look at this in script and then start to look at some of the things we might want to do with it in script and perhaps just discuss briefly some of the reasons why mrdc will offer you some advantages as long as you've got the right people to drive it uh, let's just make some tables and i'm just going to repeat what happened in the previous video so i'm going to open a tables file call it my tables open up that QTF just like normal and I'm going to insert some standard tables and I'm going to pick from my columns a banner here that's got analysis breaks and I'll pick pretty much all the questions in the survey there they are all 23 of them and I'm going to run uh, prepare that and I'm going to run it so if I run that now there we go we get a table for each of the questions analyzed by gender region and country so that's a very good use of QPS very efficiently producing those tables in just a few clicks um, arguably quicker than actually MRDCL would when you want something as straightforward and as easy as that for every single question but let's have a look now behind the scenes and see what uh, has been made so what's been made here is an a, a STP file. So what actually QPS does from those QTF instructions, it makes an STP file, runs it for you, and then shows you the results uh, and, and, and leaves you to do your work in the QTF file if you want to uh, make changes or, or add tables or whatever else it might be that you want to do with your particular project. So what, if we want to actually work on this, one thing you have to be careful of if you use QPS in conjunction with MRDCL is you probably don't want to work in this file here. So if we were to open this in MRDCL, I would recommend just copying it into a new file just like that pasting it in I don't think I copied it there let me just get that again copy and paste that in and I would then save that as a different named file otherwise if I rerun my tables in QPS 
or I, I get mixed up what I'm actually running, uh, my MRDCL tables. If I get mixed up what I'm running, I could have the problem that um, that uh, I overwrite the STP file. So that's one thing to look out for. So if I open up this, this STP file now, if I were to run it in MRDCL, I would just get exactly the same results as we saw just now. There they are exactly the same figures and we could again produce those in a spreadsheet or in a uh, text file as just as QPS does so again exactly the same outputs as, as you can generate in QPS but this time running it through MRDCL but what MRDCL allows you to do is to do some other things in some ways that either are laborious in QPS or you just simply can't do because QPS only has a subset of the functions that MRDCL has. So all that QPS is doing is using a, a small set of the tools that MRDCL has when it actually produces the tables, but it's using that engine uh, effectively to uh, produce those tables. So let's work through uh, the STP file, look what it's generated. I'm not going to spend too long on this stage. There in the uh, top part here, you'll see a, a control stage. And indeed, M MRDCL runs are comprised of four stages or up to four stages, a control stage, a data stage, a table stage and a manipulation stage. The control stage is where you tell it things about the run. So we're telling it the data file here and some different things like the width of the pages that we want to set uh, on our output. A data stage where you pick up all your data and define your variables. A table stage where you uh, actually run the tables and a manip stage where you can actually do arithmetic on those tables. Now, one thing you can do in MRDCL that you can't do in QPS is you can split these stages. So if you've got a big project, you'll be able to handle the data stage separate from the table stage, which means that once you've got your database built and you've got all the data stage correct and all the questions entered and all the variables that you want added, you can just run tables from that database and that will be significantly quicker on a big project. A project that takes five seconds to run, it'll make no difference. If you've got a project, though, that perhaps runs for 30 minutes by splitting it into a data stage and a table stage, you might find that the data stage takes 25 minutes reading perhaps hundreds of thousands of records, but the table stage actually only takes four minutes and if you were to just rerun it with some more tables, it would only take that four minutes in future rather than them to run the thing every time as you do in QPS. So that's one sort of side advantage, if you like, of MRDCL. All right, so let's have a look at some of the script we got here. As I say, there's a whole series of run control parameters here. These are things that control the run. So it, by default, uh, for example, this one here says that any any question or variable getting with an X is actually not uh, not used in tabulations, whereas QPS does allow that. So it uses this X not temp run control parameter that means that X is a valid question or variable name. Tidy means it cleans up the files after it finishes. Uh, no list means you don't get a listing file, which will be something that you'll, you'll see when we work with MRDCL. And it tells it that it wants to compile, execute and print the stages, i.e. run all the tables and so on. But let's get into the nitty gritty here now of what we're picking up. And if we flick between uh, these two screens here, we can probably see what it's generating side by side here. So here's our... Uh, QDF, so let's just shrink that and shrink that. And here is our MRDCL script. So we start here with iWave, and iWave, if we scroll across here, is in field number six. So what QPS generates in MRDCL script here is DI, define an integer, because we declared it as an integer over here, iWave is 6-6. -6. So that's just saying that the field is only one digit wide and it's picking it up and it puts out the title wave ID. The next question is gender, which is single. So it puts out DS here, gender 7 to 7. It could have just said 7. That's actually something that uh, QPS outputs. It doesn't need that dash 7 in there. So it, we could have omitted that and it would work perfectly well. And it's picking up codes 1 to 2. And we've got a title for gender, 
and uh, 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 some labels, male and female. And again, QPS tends to generate some unnecessary script, so it's actually repeating the variable name. That would actually work perfectly well if you were using MRD scale script. It would know that that's the title that applies to gender. It's just that gen uh, QPS doesn't necessarily generate the most efficient MRD CL script always. Uh, it tends to do things in a slightly long way sometimes uh, for its own convenience. All right, so we move down to question three here, and that's in nine to 10, codes one through to 14. There's the title. And there's all the responses, which should match the responses that we would find down here. Here we go. We've got UK, USA, France, Germany. And if we look over here in the script, you can see that's all been in quotes with semicolons. And of course, to use MRDCO, you've got to learn this script. So really, this is a good way, actually, of learning the basics of MRDCL if you're familiar with QPS already, because you can actually see what it does. It won't teach you necessarily the most efficient MRDCL script. That's the only thing I would say, because there are some shortcuts that, uh, that, that you can take when you write this sort of script that QPS isn't taking. And we'll look at one or two of those in just a moment. So... This is how one way of learning it. If you really want to get into learning uh, MRDCL script in a bit more detail, uh, there are 50 videos that take you through from getting started right through to some complex com concepts that certainly QPS can't handle. So let's look a bit deeper then on what, why we actually uh, want to use MRDCL rather than what it does. I was going to point out one variable here. You can see the analysis breaks variable here at the end. Uh, comes from gender, region, and so on. So that's how we can combine different uh, variables together to make a, a banner or some other variable where we're combining different questions together. And the table statements are fairly straightforward. So these are the tables that our QTF made. You see it can made a table stage that I referred to earlier. And it said table one is gender by analysis breaks, two is by region. And these, of course, match the 23 tables that were output when we actually ran the QTF in QPS. And again, of course, when I ran it in MRDCL, I got exactly the uh, same results. All right, so let's come out of this now and let's look a little bit more as to why you might want to use MRDCL. And there's probably too many reasons to go through. And if you want to look at some of the things that MRDCL can do, uh, it really is worth looking at the video channel, www.mrdclearning-learning.com. And that will take you through some of the videos or show you the videos that are available for some of the more complex com uh, topics. And MRDCL really wins over QPS where you have the right level of staff who can handle this type of product. So they need to be able to be more program minded rather and, and, and regular users more to the point than perhaps somebody who uses QPS who might use it once every you know month or even less often um, and, and still be able to use it quite effectively. Where MRDCL scores, um, it's probably in sort of two or three ways. Certainly when things are laborious, MRDCL is very good. Uh, where things are repetitive, MRDCL is very good. When things are just very complex, MRDCL is very good. And where you want to build templates, MRDCL is a concept of writing templates so that you can automatically generate uh, tables um, just by feeding it some parameters. So like a summary table, for example, you can just feed it two or three parameters and it'll go and make the table you want. Whereas that can be quite cumbersome to do in QPS sometimes. So let's have a look at some of the things that we might want to do. Well, one of the things that sort of come to my mind when I was thinking about this was that if we go back into our uh, QDF here, let's just reopen it. So if we open that QDF here now, and here's the sort of thing where MRDC would be very efficient. Let's say this was not just a straight question 12 series down here, but we were asking these same questions for five products and the products were rotated. That would be quite a complex thing to do. So imagine question 12A was repeated five times for five different products and those products could be tested either in as product A, B, C, D, E. Another respondent might do them as A, C, D, 
B, A or something like that. So every respondent was doing the different order. And in QPS, that would be quite a complex task to handle. You would need to probably uh, add, table add each table on top of each other. So you would need to say, for example, if you wanted to do analysis of the first statement here, you would need to do for the table for product A, you would need to say, well, if they're talking about product A, I want this in entry. If they're talking about product A at the second test, I'd want this entry at the third test, this entry and so on. And it would be quite a laborious task to do. MRDCL has the facilities in there to handle data, what's called hierarchical data, so that you can treat data on different levels. So you can have data that relates to respondents, data that re relates to products, data that relates to trips, and so on. So you have multiple levels of data within the same survey. And QPS doesn't really allow this. Um, and really isn't the right tool for that sort of data because it just starts to get very complex and cumbersome or it just simply can't handle what you want. So that's the first reason. Then another reason where I think Q, uh, MRDCL is really good is where you want something repetitive. So let's say, let's look at Q12A here. You can see that it's got a rating scale and you might refer to these two codes at the top as the top two boxes and these as the bottom two boxes. Now let's say for all those uh, questions 12A to 12G you wanted a top two box and a bottom two box added. Now that is possible in um, um, QPS but it gets quite laborious. So in MRDCL you can just define something like this. So you could say that I want a variable called Q12A, which is Q12A, the top two box, which is codes one to two, or you could say one or two. Then I want the bottom two box, which is codes four or five. And then I want Q12A just as it was before with all of the codes from very important down to not given. And then I can say that the labels are top two box, bottom two box and because the other labels are the same I can just say that they were the, the, exactly the same as the original Q12A and that would build me a variable v, v, VQ12A. Now you could then of course go and copy and paste that and go through and do that for B and do that for B again and again the problem with that is that gets quite dangerous and it's easy to miss one and make a mistake. You could easily leave this one here as A, for example, and that might be something that would be very difficult to spot. So again, MRDCL has a technique for dealing with this. You can just say, I want to write a loop for my seven Q12 variables or questions here. And I don't want to do it for A. I want to do it for A, B, C, D. EFG and that little bit of magic code there, that square bracket uh, tilde A, will just do it for me. So now what I've built are 12, uh, sorry, seven variables for question 12 that do a top two box and a bottom two box. Now, of course, that takes a bit of learning to be able to do that. But once you've learned that tool, that uh, skill, um, it gives you some real power and stuff that you can do very quickly just on the fly. And then when you come to tabulate it, you might want a summary table. Now that's quite complex in, uh, in uh, QPS, but in MRDCL, you could either just set it up as a table using uh, M the full MRDCL syntax. But what, what most users do, they would set up a template for it and just say, this is Q12, it's got seven statements and I want to call it a summary of Q12 and they would then just say well can you insert me summary one and that would do everything for them so a summary table that puts the columns side by side would just be a case of keying in two or three parameters calling a common piece of code that you have or a template that you have and running it and if you wanted a mean score summary you might say the same thing you might just put in here that it's a mean score summary and you might call that one summary two and that would 
insert a template that you have prepared or that you, you've you've obtained that just lets you uh, automatically generate those tables for you. So some really powerful things that you can do in MRDCL that you just really can't easily contemplate in QPS. So that's sort of some of the things that you can look at. You've got this language for uh, doing things in shorthand. You've also got a technique called EPS in MRDCL that lets you build templates in Excel so that you can automate whole processes there, put your list of questions and tables in a spreadsheet so that an unskilled user can specify what they want, what controls they want on those tables. MRDCL will read it and automatically generate tables. Another thing that gets quite cumbersome in QPS is where you've got a tracking study and the questionnaire keeps changing and the data locations keep changing. So with that, there's two ways of dealing with that. In, in QPS, you tend to do a data handover. So each wave you keep handing your data over so that it's effectively recoded to the latest format, which works. But again, can be dangerous. If a mistake is made, it's very hard to spot that. And that mistake might, you know, prevail for several ways before it's actually uh, spotted. In, in uh, MRDCL, you can actually put little filters on. So you can say, if month is one, I want gender to be defined from here. If month is two, well, it came from location 11. Now that, again, looks a little bit laborious to me. And what I would do if I was designing something like this, I would actually put it all into a spreadsheet. I would put my questions down the left hand side of the spreadsheet. I would put the data locations in the spreadsheet as columns. And again, an MRDCL script could just read that workbook and all the definitions and all the data locations and the whole thing would be automated. And then a tracking study becomes more of a clerical task rather than doing data handovers and having to recode data uh, every wave and having a risk associated with it. So there's some of the things you can do at MRDCL. If you've got the right people to use MRDCL, people with a sort of are regularly going to use it with a program mentality. So you need a, a, a throughput of work to justify it. But if you've got those sort of people and those sorts of projects, you'll get some huge benefits from MRDCL and you'll start to process projects in, I don't know, it will vary, but at least it, you'll re reduce your uh, staff time by 30% on average and you might even get up to 70, 80 or even 90% in some cases. So some real productivity gains if um, you, know, you do adopt MRDCL. So that's the end of this video. Uh, I hope it's been useful to you. Uh, I'd certainly advise you to look at the mrdcl-learning.com uh, website for more, but you'll find some more tips on this on this website as well on how to use uh, scripting within QPS. Thank you.